What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Uh, today, we're going to be getting into Judges chapter 12. Hallelujah. And I apologize for missing the last couple of days. I've been working on uh, the music that I'm about to put out last days. It's a, if you don't know, it's a project with it's a Christian rap, Christian hip hop project with uh, 10 tracks and also a bonus track on the end. And I've been working a lot on that. I actually stayed up uh, two days in a row working on it and just finished it last night. And it's going to be released tomorrow. I plan on releasing it tomorrow on YouTube at 6 o'clock. Right when the Sabbath is beginning. Tomorrow. And tomorrow is also the two-year anniversary of the deal of the cent the release of the deal of the century. Well, technically not the release. It wasn't an actual, uh, the, I would say the announcement of the deal of the century that was uh, put out by Donald Trump, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, Jared Kushner. So that was two years ago, tomorrow. And my, music's coming, my music is coming out tomorrow, last days. So I just hope uh, it'll help strengthen some of y'all and bring many people to faith. I don't care about any fame, any glory, any recognition. I don't want any of that. I just wanted to touch people. And, uh, well, let me, uh, let me tell you the track list real quick. The first song is called, It's the Truth. Second is, uh, Watching Me. Third is Kingdom of God. Fourth is Used To. Fifth is uh, His Kingdom Will Come. Number six is Forget the Money. Number seven is The Judgment's Coming. Number eight, um, Hands to the Sky. Or no, number eight is Wedding Garment. Number nine, Hands to the Sky. And number ten is uh, Full Time. And then the bonus track, number eleven, is Our Reality which uh, is featuring uh, an artist named Freedom. The same uh, Adam, his name's Adam, who was a part of two of my videos recently. That's called Our Reality. That's going to be number 11 as a bonus track. Hallelujah. But uh, before we get started with, with the study, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life, and although he was perfect, and didn't deserve any punishment. The death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection and he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. To truly turn to God, to give, give your life to him. Turn from your sins, turn to him. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins, ask him to forgive you. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Turn to Jesus. And serve him. And now. Let's get into Judges 12. And also tomorrow. If not tomorrow night. Uh, that Well the next thing I'll, I'll be putting on YouTube. Is the music. And I plan on releasing it at 6 o'clock. But. Um, if not. Uh, tomorrow night. Saturday. We're going to be getting into Jud Judges 13. And that's uh, the beginning of the Samson story. Hallelujah.
So Judges 12. Then the men of Ephraim and uh, well, let me just continue. Uh, so, some somebody's up here in the house, so I was thinking about stepping outside. I'll just continue though. Then the men of Ephraim were summoned, and they crossed to Zaphon, and said to Jephthah. So Zaphon. I'll pull up the map here. Here's the Dead Sea. Here's Zaphon right here on the other side of the Jordan River. Uh, get, uh, Jephthah had just come up, coming. Well, I think I'm thinking of the Gideon story. But uh, actually, let me go back to this uh, chapter. Yeah, it's uh, Jephthah. But anyway, th this is where Zaphon is. Right here. And then over here is the territory of Ephraim. And then up here, Manasseh. Manasseh also had territory up here. But uh, Shiloh, Shechem. The Dead Sea down here. And the Jordan River is that uh, river that runs separating those uh, territories. Then the men of Ephraim were summoned, and they crossed to Zaphon, and said to Jephthah, why did, you cr why did you cross over to fight against the sons of Ammon without calling us to go with you? We will burn your house down on you. Jephthah said to them, I and my people were at great strife with the sons of Ammon. When I called you, you did not deliver me from, the from their hand. When I saw that you would not deliver me, I took my life in my own hands and crossed over against the sons of Ammon. And Yahuwah gave them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against, to fight against me? Jephthah get, gathered all the men of Gilead. Jephthah was a Gileadite. And Gilead, let me see if Gilead is on the map here or not. Well, Gideon was from... Ophrah. I don't think we have Gilead listed on here. There's a Sea of Galilee, Jordan River. Then Jephthah gathered all the men of Gilead and fought and fought Ephraim. And the men of Gilead defeated Ephraim because they said. You are fugitives of Ephraim, O Gileadites, in the midst of Ephraim and in the midst of in the midst of Manasseh. So the Gileadites, uh, which were descendants of Gilead, were uh, the Ephraimites said to them, "You you are fugitives of Ephraim, O Gileadites, in the midst of Ephraim and in the midst of Manasseh." The Gileadites captured the fords of the Jordan opposite Ephraim. Oh, uh, there at uh, Zaph Zaphon, or down in that area, on the other side of the Jordan, opposite Ephraim. The Gileadites captured the fords of the Jordan opposite Ephraim. And it happened when any of the fugitives of, e of Ephraim said, let, let me cross over. So they, they would stop, stop them from, they weren't letting them cross the Jordan River from Ephraim into, uh, that would be the territory of, Gad, I believe. And it happened when any when any of the fugitives of Ephraim said, Let me cross over, the men of Gilead would say to, say to him, Are you an Ephraimite? If he said no, then they would say to him, Now say Shibboleth. But he said Sibboleth, because he could not pronounce it correctly. Then they seized him and slew him at the fords of the Jordan. Thus there fell at that time 42,000 of Ephraim. Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Gileadite died and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. Now Ibsen, Ibzan of Bethlehem, and I'm not sure if this is, but we know there's two Bethlehems. I'm not sure if this was Bethlehem of Judah or the other one, which I, 
I can't remember what uh, territory, what tribe had the other Bethlehem. But uh, now Ibzan of Bethlehem, so I'm not sure which Bethlehem this is. Now Ibz Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel after him. He had 30 sons and 30 daughters whom he gave in marriage outside the family. And he brought in 30 daughters from outside for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then Ibzan died and was buried in Bethlehem. Now Elon, the Zebulonite, from the tribe of Zebulun, ju judged Israel after him, and he judged Israel ten years. Then Elon the Zebulonite died, and was buried at Ijalon, in the land of Zebulun. Now Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Parathonite, judged Israel after him, and he had forty sons and thirty grandsons, who rode on seventy donkeys, and he judged Israel eight years. Then Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Parathonite, died and was buried at Parathon, in the land of Ephraim, in the hill country of the Amalekites. So after Jephthah, there was Ibzan. As far as the judges of Israel, there was Ibzan, Elon, then Abdon. And the next one that we're going to see in the next chapter is Samson. And hallelujah i'm glad to be back doing these bible studies i i just looked and the last one i did was five days ago but i had to get this music done um my pro tools subscription or trial was was running out and actually just ran out tonight i was uh i was gonna edit uh the music a little bit more just adjust a couple things but uh when I opened up Pro Tools, it, it had just expired like five minutes before. And I, I, I thought I had another day or something. But it's all good because the mu music is good. The music is done. It's better than I thought it was going to be. It's uh, it's pretty powerful. It, I would say the best uh, project I put out probably by far. But uh, praise God. Glory to him. It turned out better than I expected. And I look forward to putting this out tomorrow. Like I said, it should be on YouTube around 6 o'clock, right when the Sabbath's starting. Hallelujah. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. Brothers and sisters, let's stay strong in faith. Let's endure to the end. Let's walk in all the ways of God and serve him with all our heart. Let's be prepared for the return of the Lord. He's coming soon. Um, God is leading me to say... Um, you know, someone, somebody posted on f Facebook earlier, said something like, uh, what's the biggest problem with the church here, here in the last days or here in the days that we're living in? And God gives us that in Revelation 2 and 3. And I also spoke about this, uh, more in depth than I'm going to speak about it now. In, um, my video called M Music Preview 2. CD burn and the seven churches. So in Revelation 2 and 3, the three main things that God has against his church here in these last days and throughout time, but especially here in these last days, one is sexual immorality. One is uh, eating things sacrificed to idols, which is worldliness. And the other one is uh, Nicola the Nicolaitans. And the Nicolaitans, that represents uh, lawlessness. Um... Uh, most of modern modern day Christianity believes in that we're not supposed to be keeping the law of God and they don't keep his commandments that they're supposed to be. But uh, yeah, check out that video uh, for more details. Uh, uh, I also have a seven churches study, but for more details on um, on uh, the seven churches and those three things. But, um, but yeah, good to be back on here, back doing the Bible studies. Lord willing, I'm going to continue doing these Bible studies every single day until we finish the Bible. And then beyond that, maybe, uh, I mean, I'll still be doing studies, Lord willing, if the Lord tarries, um, maybe get into the Apocrypha, um, 
maybe go back into the Psalms, Proverbs. Uh, there's a few different studies that I would like to do. I want to get back into the Gospels as well. But uh, whatever God's will is, may it be done. And, uh, and thank you all for tuning in. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to give you eternal life. You just got to be willing to truly turn to him with all your heart. Believe in his salvation and ask him for forgiveness. That's the end of Judges 12. Thank you all for tuning in. Love you all. Shalom.